Good evening. All right, so we are at, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We are doing the Redemption Manual 4.5. And the last time I read, we we're on the bottom of page 45. Let me just go over a little bit of the last couple paragraphs so we can kind of see where we left off. The story in the Matrix trilogy deals with a system which progresses from a democracy to a republic. This is a mirror image to the history of the United States, which has progressed from a republic in 1787 to a democracy in 2003, when this movie came out. A democracy is also a nation which is led by the military under emergency rules behind a front of civilian rule to confuse the populace as to the true nature of what is happening. In a democracy, the rights and needs of the individual must be subjugated, put down to the needs and wants of the whole. There is no individual liberty per se. The military, political, commercial system is operated under the admiralty maritime rules of contribution and the presumption of joint tort feasors. In the Matrix Trilogy, the lives of the people are not paramount. They have been warehoused in facilities where liberty freedom and independent action are non-existent for the average inhabitant who does not even understand that his life is an illusion, that he is programmed to feed the war machine. At the same time, the average inhabitant is mentally deluded into believing his whole life is one of a normal free and independent inhabitant of a modern society exercising free will. This is done by instilling mental unawareness into the being or else controlled rebellion into others. In modern society, it is done chemically by drugs or alcohol, or it is done commercially by withdrawing the desire or means of successful fulfillment, exporting productive jobs from the society, or it is done politically by providing controlled candidates which offer no change in the makeup of the system, or it is done psychologically by instilling cognitive dissonance into the population. In short, the tools of modern society are used to enslave living souls, death, as opposed to providing life and providing it more abundantly. Have you been deceived into feeding the war machine? Occasionally, one inhabitant of the matrix breaks free of his programming and sees a larger picture. These people are the ones who take the red pill and are presumably physically independent of the social programming of the matrix. <coughs> Excuse me. These people have collected together in a society called the people of Zion in their movie. Today, in the present world, we might call these people patriots. Symbolism in the Matrix Trilogy. It is not a coincidence that Zion is the name of a mountain in the Old Testament of scripture representing the children of Israel. The children of Israel gathered to become a nation and receive their law from the creator when the children of Israel were led out of slavery in Egypt. So the matrix is a metaphor for Egyptian slavery. The people of Zion in the movie were a metaphor for ex-slaves led to their freedom by the creator to create and start a republic na nation of their own. A republic is a form of government based upon liberty and freedom, which requires knowledge and wisdom of the inhabitants to self-rule under concepts of honor and responsibility. 
this is in direct opposition to rule by the dictates of a commercial military industrial complex based upon policies and police regulations which assume inhabitants are incapable of treating one another with honor and respect without supervision and discipline. It is also not a coincidence that the symbols used in the matrix parable are mirror images or backwards to reality in meaning and time. The people of Zion who are supposed to be alive and free are buried deep in the ground in the city of Zion in the movie as though they were dead corpses. The dead people living in the matrix in a condition of a coma are warehoused on the surface of the plan the plane as though they were alive and mobile the surface of the plane is smoky dreary the sun never shines but appears dead the city of zion is alive with activity but lit by artificial light the people in the matrix are programmed to be happy and without a care in the world. But they have no independent thought or ability to affect change on their commercial political system. The people of Zion are always apprehensive about the war and struggling to survive. They have the capacity to affect change and also must exercise discretion and elect responsibility. In today's world, the people of the matrix are the 99.99% .99 of the people who live with their heads in the sand and have no clue as to what is going on. They are programmed by the talking heads, the boob tube, and other public sources of information, including the public school system. The public school system. <laughs> They can carry on an allegedly articulate conversation about persons, places, and events while never knowing or explaining any cause effect relationships that exist in the world or this world. In the words of Merovingian from Matrix Reloaded, they do not understand the why, therefore they are slaves. The people of Zion in today's world are, for the most part, the patriots, rebels, and yes, in some cases, terrorists. Or at least they may shortly be prosecuted politically for being terrorists. These people are outside the matrix, so to speak, even though the matrix still exercises control over them. These patriots are mostly at war with the matrix and falsely believe that their involvement in this war will bring about change that will correct the problems with the matrix and the matrix relationship with them. About 99.99% .99 of the people of Zion in the movie live to destroy the matrix and what it symbolizes. It appears as though the matrix is out to destroy the people of Zion. There is constant warfare. Those who do not notice that a democracy is in fact a controlled war zone of competence are all the more deceived by this world. Looks can be deceiving to those who do not see or do not hear. We learned in Matrix Reloaded that the matrix is not out to completely destroy the people of Zion. In fact, the matrix is charged with restarting the people of Zion every time Zion is destroyed. Think of this program as a social urban renewal program where an old, socially archaic people of Zion must be upgraded to a new, more commercially competitive people of Zion. After all, the matrix sees the people of Zion as a manufactured enemy to the matrix used to instill commercial competition into the matrix to maximize the commercial benefits to the matrix. So every now and then the matrix exterminates the old society of independence who think they are free and restarts the new urban renewal society with better stock and blood to give the appearance of a better enemy which instills more competition into the matrix world. 
this world is just like the matrix model. It is just like the United States of America, which cannot continue as a democracy without having some permanent enemy at which the democracy is always at war. The matrix is a symbiotic society. The matrix cannot survive without an alter ego in the people of Zion. Likewise, the people of Zion have never had the ability to destroy the matrix. Scripture states the same theme, that the people of Zion and the matrix are joined together in a short-term common future. Scripture says that for a time, the wheat and the tares must grow together in the field and not be separated. To pull up the tares, the machine world of the matrix would cause death to many wheat people, people of Zion, and the sleeping people in the matrix, so they should exist together. The only two reasons that the matrix has to destroy the people of Zion is to prevent the people of Zion from getting too strong so that they would physically threaten to overthrow the control exerted on them by the matrix. And two, the matrix restarts the society with better genetic stock from time to time to create better competition with the matrix to help maximize or perfect commerce. The six restarted systems of Zion could well refer to the servants under the international world governments represented by number one the egyptians number two the syrians three the babylonians four the medusa medusa and persians medusa five the greeks and six the romans of which our current system of one world government is merely an extension of the Roman world government. Example, Roman civil law, Roman calendar, and Roman universal church. Nothing new under the sun. All roads lead to Rome. The remedy lies outside of Zion or the matrix. It is a fact. There were good entities existing as programs in the matrix. And there were evil entities existing as programs in the matrix. There were also good living souls among the people of Zion. And there were very bad living souls amongst the people of Zion. The condition of being good did not necessarily provide any remedy to mankind from the war, which existed between the matrix and the people of Zion. There was no remedy in fighting a continuous war. One's remedy is always in the peace that ensues after the war. Getting to this peace and making the condition of peace productive by one's actions is the issue. Go to peace rather than go into war. Yeah, but in the Bible it does say they will proclaim peace and safety and that is when sudden destruction comes upon them. There are four types of living souls, ostriches with their heads in the sand or their bodies in the matrix, not knowing what is going on or why it is happening. This is the most numerous type of living soul in this world. People who wake up and discover that this world is not operating correctly the way it should to bring life to the people and to bring it to them more abundantly. The people in group two are classic patriots, but they could just as well be people who have studied medicine, religion, politics, education, recorded history, or any other profession or discipline. Anyone who studies what is going on in this world by the professions or the societies knows that they have got it wrong and are creating death and not life. How about the family planners? In modern society, as an example, who use abortion to spread life? The people of Zion in the Matrix Trilogy are firmly in this group, too. They believe 
that the only solution to the perceived problem that the matrix is screwed up and doing everything backwards for the benefit of living souls is war to the death of everyone in the matrix. Group two's classic remedy is to destroy their enemies. The ones who are doing this are thinking backwards. Group two believes that when they defeat everyone else who is wrong, then things will work well for the people in group two. When the whole world changes to my way, then things will be better and I can be happy. This is their motto. But is it realistic that the whole world would change or must change in order for one to become happy? The third type of people are those who realize that one's happiness and well-being is not derived from changing the whole world to one's way of thinking. Happiness is derived by changing your way of thinking so that it creates a better world for you to live in. This is realistic. You can change yourself. You cannot change anyone else who does not see the light and want to change themselves. That's true. There were a few characters in the Matrix movie series that could be classified as group three thinkers. They believe in a remedy other than war. They include Neo, Morpheus, Trinity, the Oracle, Niobe, Jada Pinkett Smith, and the head of the Council for the People of Zion. Do you believe in a remedy other than war? Resolving a war in Matrix Revolution. It is not rational to structure your society on habitual warfare. But this is exactly what a democracy is. The ultimate cause, effect, riddle, or question that one can pose is, how do you bring a society that is at constant warfare to peace? The ultimate underlying cause is commercial debt. Commercial debt causes all war. To end war, one must either make arrangements to end the debt liability of the debtor side of the war by discharge, forgiveness, or as an operation of law. Or else the creditor must be offered some concession, which would end the war by offering something that is more desirable than the collection of debt, of the debt. In the story of Matrix Revolution, the age-old war between the Matrix and the people of Zion is ended by one of these causes. The cause of the war that plagued the people of Zion and the Matrix is not set forth in the story of any of the trilogy movies. The cause of the war was studied in an extra set of stories set forth artistically in the DVD, The Animatrix. The Animatrix tells nine short stories dealing with collateral issues involving the Matrix and the people of Zion. In the story, The Second Renaissance, Part Two, the events which led up to the war between the people and the machines are told. The war started when machines wanted representation in government. The machines felt that they contributed to commerce and needed representation. Most of the people believed that the machines should not have political representation. People started to rebel against machines by destroying them. The machines defended themselves and attacked the people for self-protection. As the machines got the upper hand, they subdued the people and placed them into servitude. The cause of the war was the dishonor of the people in not accepting the machines. Draft request to have representation in commercial government. The non-acceptance by the people made the people the commercial debtors to the machines who became the commercial creditors. In commerce, a debtor cannot win. A creditor cannot lose. In today's world, the patriots are upset at the 14th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. This amendment changed the representation of the citizenry of the political and commercial government. Under the 14th Amendment, 
artificial things are now citizens of the government instead of real people. An artificial thing, a machine, if you will, could well be defined to be a machine or an entity that performs without civil or commercial life. The 14th Amendment person is a perfect definition of a machine. Wow. That is so amazing. That's really cool. So when the patriots fight the 14th Amendment and its definition of an artificial entity as a citizen, the patriots are dishonoring the one world government's draft request for commercial representation for fictions. <laughs> this makes the one world government or the matrix the creditor. Oh, and the patriot, the commercial debtor by dishonor. Whoa. This creates a commercial warfare, which is exactly what we have in today's society. This is why the people who act as persons are described as the commercial enemies in the Trading with the Enemy Act. Whoa that was passed in the First World War as a protection from enemies and updated in 1933 under the New Deal when the United States government had to call upon the states to help defray the debt and the persons slash citizens of the United States became the enemies of the United States government by decree of President Roosevelt. Whoa, that one's a good one. You could read that or listen to that a couple of times to get that in your head. If one followed the character of Neo in the Matrix trilogy, Neo evolves from group one to group two and finally to group three. Neo starts out as an ostrich with his head in the sand in the first movie, he is awakened by Morpheus and becomes a patriot rebel in group two. In the second movie, Neo learns that it might be possible to obtain a military victory over the Matrix. By the time Neo is seen in the third Matrix movie, he is convinced that he must change his perspective in order to provide a remedy to go to peace. He is now in group three. Are you? Will you want to go to peace? Notice Neo's character in Matrix Reloaded. He does not get involved in fighting an offensive war against the Matrix. In fact, the only time Neo uses force at all is to defend himself against physical attack by Agent Smith or from characters in the Matrix which attack him. He protects his life and the lives of others without going on the offensive. The public critics of the Matrix trilogy complain that Neo's character shows little or no emotion. Why should his character? Neo is seeking knowledge and wisdom as to cause and effective relationships. In the immortal words of the Merovingian, Neo truly wants to understand the why. Neo wants to serve the people of Zion and Trinity whom he loves. Neo is not seeking self-gratification by fulfilling emotional needs, nor does Neo act as a direct and proximate result of purely emotional pressure. That's cool. In Matrix Reloaded, we learn that both Neo and Agent Smith have been decoupled from the control of the Matrix. Agent Smith is no longer a program executing within the mainframe of the Matrix. Both Agent Smith and Neo are gaining personal energy and ability now that they are not feeding energy to the Matrix. Ah, come out of her, my people. There is a vast difference in the characters of these two entities. Neo has learned love and service above self. 
Neo does not work for consideration from the other party. Agent Smith is a Satan to Neo. A Satan is defined as an adversary or one who opposes you. Agent Smith is applying all his energy toward destroying Neo and all that is good. Since they are both decoupled from the matrix, they both possess free will to lead their lives as they choose, unbridled by the constraints of the matrix controllers and its social programming. Neo seeks life. Agent Smith seeks death, peace, and war. In Matrix Revolution, the people of Zion are fighting a war against the superior force of the machines. In this war, the people of Zion can only hope to survive, but by all odds, they will lose. The Zion Military Command puts their faith in implements of war and their manpower to use them. No military strategy is based upon using outside plans or programs to stop the war. Only a few living souls within the people of Zion have any outside faith in the belief that Morpheus has, that the road of peace is somehow dependent upon Neo and what he might be able to accomplish in some way outside the scope of the military. All right, so we're on page 50, and we will go over this um, hopefully by tomorrow. It's getting really late, and I'm getting tired. So good night.